So the white-bellied frog is critically endangered. It's WA's most threatened frog species. And since it was discovered only recently in the 1980s, we know that over half of the breeding populations have become extinct. My name is Emily Hoffman. I'm a PhD researcher at the University of Western Australia. So my project is on the conservation of two threatened frog species, uh, white and orange-bellied frogs, and they're both uh, endemic to the southwest of WA, so they're only found in some tiny little patches near Margaret River. It's understanding more about what habitat it needs and what are the reasons behind especially some of these recent declines is really important for its conservation. So considerable management and monitoring efforts have been made on these two species over the last couple of decades, um, a large part in thanks to some pretty dedicated staff members of DBCA and Perth Zoo. So thanks to them we've got a really detailed picture of where and when some of these populations have gone extinct, um, but we still don't quite understand why. So um, even now we're seeing some of these populations declining and um, they seem to be happening even in areas that look undisturbed or could be in really close proximity to where populations seem to be persisting. So I want to understand uh, why these critically endangered frogs are surviving or perishing on such a tiny scale and I guess find out what's really important for them to survive in their habitat, so what are their key habitat needs. Um, one aspect that hasn't been investigated yet, uh, but we suspect plays, plays a role, is that there are changes happening in their environment on a really small scale and uh, that they relate to their hydrology. So both white and orange-bellied frogs rely on these very moist, swampy habitats to breed and we think that some of these systems might be drying up. Yeah, so for my initial study I've gone out and done a lot of habitat surveys. So surveyed across both species range and looked at some really small detailed parts of their habitat. So what's the ground cover like at these sites, how much canopy cover we got. And at the same time I've got a heap of sensors and loggers happening um, in the field. So they're going to tell us when the sites maybe start drying out. So when's this critical time of year and um, as well as that, I guess what, what level of dryness some of these sites get to. So I found some sites um, are much drier than others. So the temperature and the soil moisture um, appear to be really important in determining whether the species is there or it's not, or it used to be and now it's become extinct. So this is a really collaborative project. Um, it's pretty exciting. We're um, working really closely with the Geocrania recovery team, which are a large part made up of um, staff from the Department of Biodiversity, Conservation and Attractions, Parks and Wildlife Service, as well as Perth Zoo. So the challenges for the remaining populations are that many of them are very small in the number of frogs that they have calling. Uh, quite a lot have got less than five calling males and we assume five females, so less than a population size of 10, which means they're very easily uh, disturbed by minor fluctuations in weather or disturbance or changes in sediment running off the paddocks or whatever else. Uh, it's quite unusual to get large stable populations and one particular population in the western extent, the last remaining western extent population, is the one that uh, we've flagged for particular protection from wildfire and have recently undertaken a prescribed burn. So the prescribed burning that was undertaken was not in the actual frog habitat but in bushland immediately adjoining. So the idea there is to try and prevent a bushfire or a fire escape entering into the frog habitat. So Perth Zoo have a really fantastic head starting program that they run there uh, for both white and orange bellied frogs. And so we've developed a collaborative project where um, the eggs that they collect, we're going to incubate them at different temperatures and look at how long it takes for them to develop. This information is going to be really useful for us to identify what's going to be a good site for this species and, um, for example, where we can translocate populations into the future um, that are going to be viable. We've been working with the white-bellied frog here at Perth Zoo since 2008. Um, we first got them to try and work out how to breed them as there hadn't been enough work done on that in the past and we wanted to work out how to care for them in case they needed help at some point in the future. Um, that actually happened in 2010 and um, we were asked to breed some for release to the wild by the recovery team to try and get their numbers back up and improve their conservation status if we could. Yeah, they're really fascinating little frogs and they're, they're genuinely really little so they're only about 20 to 25 millimetres long as an adult and they're terrestrial breeders so this means that they um, don't develop like a, a sort of a stereotypical frog. Um, 
the males call from a little moist depression in the wild and the females come and lay their eggs in a jelly mass and those eggs will develop into tadpoles and into frogs entirely within that nest in the ground so without being inundated with water and so they'll emerge a couple of months later as tiny little frogs. Any new knowledge that we can develop about these species is going to be hopefully really useful to conserving them. I think this project's really exciting in that there are managers actively waiting for some of this information on the ground so it can be directly applied once we've um, hopefully got some answers for them soon.